Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and in the background you can probably hear the AC, which is mostly for show, apparently. It's working more, but not consistently. The breaker switches keep getting flipped when the, I don't know, they tried to explain it. The pressure is too high in the condenser, something like that, so... It's rough. It is very, very uh, rough. So uh, yesterday I was listening to a video by um, Wes from Thinking Critical and uh, the doctor. And they were going over this CBR article, which appears to have been written in 2018. <laughs> but the guy forgot to hit send or publish or however you make it live. Because holy shit. This was a time capsule. By the way, I have to give a special appreciation to uh, Wes because he has a lot of um, uh, partners on his show. Sometimes he's with The Doctor. Sometimes he's with Aaron Sparrow. Sometimes he's with, uh, I forget his name. They, they talk about like the best comics of the week. It's, it's kind of rare for someone to be able to have like one person that they have a good rapport and they can chop it up with. But he seems to be able to get along with everyone and get different perspectives. I mean, if you think about YouTube comics, you think about middle-aged men fighting with each other. And he's like the opposite of that. He seems to just get along with people or just stay away from people who want to uh, beef with them. So that's very impressive. So they were going through this CBR article um, and uh, it, it was kind of interesting because I actually had to stop the video to read the article because when they talk about the article, I kept spacing out. Now I noticed something similar happened. I forget which movie, but recently I rewatched a movie. No, it was uh, Justice League, the animated series. I tried to rewatch season one, but I have seen those episodes so many times that my brain kept going into low power mode uh, and I like I could not keep my attention because like I knew the next scene the next shot the next line of dialogue the next sound effect so that's what this article was like like when they were discussing it it quickly went into like the Charlie Brown teacher wah wah sounds like wah 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 comics game wah 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 toxic fans um so I was like blah, blah. um so I was like okay who wrote this is it one of the usual suspects and uh, it wasn't but then when I went down to the you know that little blurb at the uh bottom where they talk about the person it said they had written something like 3600 articles for CBR and I mean this article was it was stupid, it was cliche, it was divisive, it was just old. Like, pe people getting up and they're like angry about Comicsgate, like that is so 2018. <laughs> it's so 2018. So anytime someone brings up Comicsgate to hate on them, especially in 2023, like, it sticks out. It's like, why are you doing this? And so I just went to this guy's Twitter because I was like, who is this guy? I don't, I've never heard of him. He wrote 3,600 articles on comics. I've never heard of him. I, I feel like I should have at least heard of him. And right there on the top of it is a GoFundMe. And holy shit. Their life is just sad, man. Like, it's sad and it's not let me just how, how do I say this I was talking to a friend about this because I was actually kind of upset um, like this person's life is terrible and I said you never find out that an SJW's life is better than you thought it was it's always worse it's always much much worse a lot of these people have severe health problems, uh, a lot of them mental health problems, uh, the poverty that these people live in. It made me think about how often this has happened. 
um, because you know with Twitter you can kind of craft a personality and they always craft this like snarky condescending tone but every single time when you find out the smallest part of their regular life which is like in a pinned tweet on their Twitter they're telling you this is what my life is like it's never good and it's always so much worse so it but it explains so much you got these people whose lives are in utter shambles and it's not one of those like series of tragedies where it's not their fault there's it's trust me it's their fault yes some of them have illnesses but like you can still prosper when you have a disability or a handicap like these people wallow and then they look for someone to blame they look for someone a group that is approved to attack in the most vicious way imaginable now there was an exception and that was mark brooks because financially mark brooks seems to be doing quite well and i wasn't aware of that he started bragging about it and i was like oh he's probably exaggerating i talked to some friends and they're like no he's doing good but if you're 50 and you're trying to fight dudes at a convention and you're still carrying a grudge for someone taking your chair at a convention 20 years ago number one you should probably avoid conventions it doesn't seem like you can really handle them emotionally number two speaking of not handling things well emotionally obviously you've got some very deep-seated issues that have nothing to do with comics gate existing so my thesis is that so I said I listened to Wes's video I listened to it mostly but at one point I looked over and he was reading this stanza from the article about toxic fandom and it's like they don't give independent comics a chance and then he did something brilliant he went to the search function of CBR he typed in ripiverse and the results were no results found so probably the number one success story of the last five years Eric July and comic book resources has not written even one article about him meanwhile one of the writers is writing this 2018 style anti comics gate hit piece mentions them like three or four times in this short article do you see how all of this is coming together Eric July literally has an entire cottage industry I've never seen anything like it all of this anti fans anti comic skate anti ripiverse anti indiegogo it was all one thing miserable people lashing out at allowed targets the tastemakers the shot callers of the mainstream comic book industry said okay those people you can do anything to them you can say anything you can do anything nothing is off limits now for most people it was like they're jerks and they moved on with their life because they have better things to do but if you're 40 and you're so broke that your teeth are literally falling out of your jaw if I don't even want to get into the details of this guy's life let me just say this phrase kept popping into my head describing these people's lives accurately feels like bullying weaponizing the miserable telling them hey we're not gonna pay you more and we're definitely not gonna give you more work but we will give you attaboys and attention if you viciously attack these people which will probably feel pretty good because quite frankly exhibit a your life so anyway before I go first kill graphic novel link is in the description thanks for watching bye